Hey guys, today's video is going to be a little bit different. Uh, the good people at OBR have asked us to make a video for them detailing how to use their OBR builder, which actually allows you to create your own projects in a 3D workspace um, that's quite similar to the software that we already use. So we're just going to help them out. And this whole video is going to be about how to use that interface and build your own scene on your own virtual land that you purchase using OVR um, to create a cool AR experience. And if you stick around to the end of the video, you're gonna be able to see what we did with the land that they let us have. But first, let's get into the basics of the interface, the tools, and how you can start laying out your own 3D scene in OVR's builder. Um, and then maybe later we can get into how we set up the scene and created our own AR experience uh, with the OVR Builder and the land that OVR gave us. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so what you want to do as soon as you open OVR Builder is to go ahead and log in. Uh, that way you get access to any of the land that you might have already purchased. And once you're done working on your project, you can directly publish it. You can save and publish it to um, whichever land you want to showcase your AR project on. So once you're done logging in, you will actually be able to see a window just like this. And what you're going to do is go ahead and open a new project for yourself. So when you do open a project, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to have your hexagon land on the flow of this grid. It looks like it's endless. You've got a horizon line at the back. So this is essentially what a lot of 3D uh, interfaces look like. And OVR actually has an inbuilt tutorial that you can access whenever you want by going to help and enabling the tutorial. I've kind of already gone through it. So I'm just gonna let you guys know everything from scratch as well as what the tutorial already says. But if you find yourself confused at any point through your project, it'll be really great to just go over here hover over help and then toggle on the tutorial just to refresh your memory but if you do not want to go to the entirety of the tutorial you can also see that at the bottom left here there is a list of all the controls that you might need to use so if you are ever in a pinch you can just refer to this at the bottom here uh, but let's start from the beginning so what you've got here is the hexagon which is your land and it's titled bounds hexagon on the right side in the hierarchy tab so this section here is actually going to be your outliner. It's just going to show you essentially a list of everything that you have in your scene. It's going to all be listed here and this will help you organize yourself. And it could also help in the event that your scene is going to get a little cluttered. And if you can't click and select from the viewport itself, you can at least browse from here and select which asset you want to move around. So that's essentially what you're going to be looking out for in your hierarchy on the right side. At the top, we have elements and elements is where all the major components are for building your scene. For instance, we have a ground plane that just adds one flat ground level that extends all the way out into the horizon. Let's get rid of that just for now. We've got various types of lights as well, one of which is the ambient light which will illuminate all the objects in our scene. It's not coming from a specific direction. Um, it's just a mild amount of light that will generally light all objects that are available. Uh, we also have directional lights, which you would use to focus onto a specific object. It emits a light along a single direction. And if you ever want to remember these, as long as you hover over it, they will have some kind of description for them. So you don't have to memorize and understand what these lights do. I'm just going to give you a basic breakdown. Um, a hemisphere light is going to illuminate the scene from overhead. It kind of acts like a sky, a dome over your scene if you need that kind of atmospheric lighting. Um, a spotlight is also a little bit like a directional light, but you will be able to focus within uh, focus on objects within a cone. Um, you've got something called a point light, which emits light from a single point. Imagine it like a lamp or a little bulb, stuff like that. And it emits it in all directions. We also have the capability to add an image, a video or audio. So if you want there to be music in your scene, um, or if you want there to be a video playing, these features will help you bring those into your scene as well. Um, you can also see that there is simple water, and when you are messing with these, you will see on the right side, the properties panel. 
Now the properties panel is where you will go to see all the details about the specific element that you are selecting. So if you go to your hierarchy, you'll be able to toggle between them if there are too many things going on in your scene. So it'll be important to sort of um, manage your hierarchy well and keep it in nice order. But yeah, so now we're on simple water and you can see the properties for simple water. If you need to navigate this better, you can come over here and change the name. Um, especially if you're using a lot of models in your scene and you keep track of all of them. The checkbox over here will allow you to toggle on and off its visibility, which will you know change whether it's actually visible in the scene or not. Over here are the transformation details and it'll show you the specific transformation values for each of the axes that this object can be moved, Y for up and down, um, Z for forwards or backwards, X for left to right, at least in this orientation that we have right now. And if you want to change the position in the scene without using the gizmo or without using the value slider over here, you can use the keyboard shortcut to move, which is G to grab and your mouse automatically moves the plane around and then you can click to place it anywhere in the scene. So G will freeform move the object and once you click it, it will drop where you want it to go, wherever your mouse is pointing. Um, and that is a faster way to feel a little bit more agile while you're working through this process so you don't have to be blocked down by using each of these axes but if using the axes gets a bit tricky with the, with a lot of objects in your scene you can always use the value slider over here to um, change the position of the objects and that also goes for rotation so if you want to rotate an object uh, you can click over here or use a shortcut r to toggle on uh, the rotation gizmo and then you'll be able to rotate freely currently you might notice or default you might notice that it sort of isn't as smooth as you wanted you won't be able to rotate incrementally and that's because snapping is on and snapping allows you to automatically snap to uh, simpler degrees like a 90 degree turn for rotation specifically and to turn that off you have to navigate to the top bar as well and toggle snap board by clicking on the highlighted magnet icon at the top here. Um, the shortcut for that is C. So if you turn it off, you can see that the magnet is no longer highlighted. And now you can rotate your object um, pretty smoothly to all the lovely degrees in between every 90 degree turn. So yeah, just make sure to toggle that off. But uh, in the event that you do need to toggle it on, just remember the shortcut is C. And this also does help you work with things that are supposed to be in grids that you want aligned to the flow grid as well. So just keep it in mind because it's a nifty tool to have. Um, so that is the transformation rotation property. And let's move to the last one, which is scale. And the shortcut for scale is Y, or you can click up here to get the gizmo. But yeah, it, you can use Y to do it quickly. And if you can see right here, there's a little cube in the middle of these axes. Um, and clicking on the cube and dragging outwards will increase the scale and dragging back inward towards the cube will decrease the scale of your object. Of course, again, you can use the scale slider here to change the values in whichever axes that you want to change it. Uh, of course, if you don't want to use the slider, you can go ahead and just type the value in here as well. So there's quite a lot of options to how you could go around it. Um, when it comes to these properties. At the bottom here, you'll see properties that are specific to the object that you're selecting. So if you look at the directional light, it will have different properties according to the color of the light. As you can see, when I change the color, the reflection in the water changes and that will allow you to get a nice lighting depending on what kind of scene you're going for. So that's one of the properties for directional light. Um, you also have the intensity, which you have a scale for, and a higher value equals a higher intensity, and a low value equals a lower intensity. And you can see how directly it affects the reflections on the water. So you can have a lot of fun with this and try out different lighting setups to really achieve the look of the scene that you want to have. Um, there's also an option to cast shadows. And I'm going to look at this by dragging some cubes into the scene. To do that, we're going to look at OVR's default assets. 
um, as you can see there's a lot of windows and architectural assets here but we're going to ignore those and scroll all the way down and get a cube mock-up as soon as we click it it's going to move around with our cursor so i'm just going to plop that here in the scene and still in scale i'm just going to make one big cube then i'm going to bring another one so i'm going to drop it here it's going to be tiny and i'm going to use the right mouse button to fly around the screen and move it around so it's we're looking at it from better angle and now i'm going to go into properties and turn on cast shadow and receive shadow for both these objects so now you can clearly see the smaller cube is affected by the shadow that's falling on it from the larger cube so if you want to look into more complicated lighting situations where the objects in your scene directly affect the other objects in your scene these are the properties that you're going to be tinkering around with and the ones that you really want to look out for which is receiving shadows from neighboring objects and the ability to cast shadows as well and these will be also obviously directly linked to how many lights you have in the scene so different sources of light from different angles will affect what kind of shadows are cast and how harsh the shadows will be also on top of these if you can see there is a loop animation property for most models and that's because you can bring them in you can bring these files into OVR with an animation baked into it already and hopefully it's a looping animation so that people will, don't have to watch it start and then stop so as you can see here when we used our raptor model we actually did have a run animation for it so if you click it there you can enable it and I'll add some footage later in the video for how it looked like when we actually went to check the land so as you can already see, OVR has a bunch of architecture uh, building assets that you can use. There's also an architecture kit specifically uh, set aside from the rest, which has a lot more elements that you can choose from to make some kind of uh, building experience in AR. There's a rock kit, which is a little tiny, but it's got a wide variety of rocks for maybe some kind of a garden scene if that's what you're interested in. But the coolest thing here is the fact that we can connect to our Sketchfab accounts. So if you guys don't have Sketchfab, it's a wonderful platform that allows 3D model creators and people looking for 3D models to come together. Uh, you can buy and sell or source them for free and OVR is a really cool feature that allows you to connect to that platform and source any free um, AR ready models so that's going to make your life a whole lot easier so let's go ahead and get rid of these ugly little cubes and look for something that might be interesting to put into our scene so as you can see there's a whole bunch of varieties of um, characters uh, you can see that there are environments so there's really no limit to what you could build once you have your VR account and once you're in this space so don't be afraid to try things out so here's just a quick time lapse of me trying out some stuff using what was available on Sketchfab. Uh, I typed in low poly, which means that the models have a lower polygon count, which means they're a little lighter and it'll be easier for OBR to run and for people to download and experience your um, creation when they do stumble across your land and want to use the app to actually be it in AR. So just keep in mind that people are going to be downloading this probably on their phones. So there is going to be a performance um, that your scene is going to have to meet so the heavier or larger the objects are or the more objects in your scene you might end up having a heavier or laggier performance at the end of the day and you can see that with the little warning sign triangles that they have next to each of the model names in your hierarchy so watch out for that this model that we have here does have an exclamation mark but if you go over to publish and then save and publish our model you can rename your model if you want to but we're just going to keep it like this um, when you go ahead you will be faced with the option to add it into the test workspace or onto the land that you have but first let's test it out in the test workspace um, so go ahead and click on the option on the left and continue to complete saving your file so when you do that you'll be faced with this window and you can see that all of the options here are green it details the amount of textures that you have in your scene the lights and basically tells you how heavy your file would be and how good the performance would be so green equals good and if you have any red items that would probably mean that your file is a little heavier 
So now I'm just going to test it out in my house itself. You go and navigate through the app to the user workspace and you should be able to, if everything has worked well, um, see your model and its animation in um, whatever room you are currently in. So you don't actually have to go all the way to the land to test it out. Um, and as you can see, the animation works perfectly fine and we're super happy with it. So I'm going to go back in, save and publish the animation to the land as well. And you guys are going to see what it looked like now when we actually went out to the location and filmed the rapture animation. So this is us out there on the field. Uh, this is what the app looks like. It'll tell you that there's an experience found if the land that you're nearby has something uh, on it. So this is the process and this is how it looked. It looked adorable. We were so excited to see that the lighting and the animation worked perfectly. And we also tested one other scene. This one had a lot more elements in it and it didn't look as impressive and finalized as the Raptor, but we did have a lot of fun trying to figure out how to get it to work. So these are the two scenes that we came up with together as a team and put into our lands. And I hope this video helps you guys figure out how to create an environment or a scene for your OVR lands. And I hope you guys have a lot of fun uh, playing around with this software. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. Huge thank you to our patrons who helped make this possible. Thank you for your support. Uh, if you also want to support yourself, you can join us on our Patreon. We also have a cool Discord channel for creatives just like us uh, to join and collaborate. So see you guys there if that interests you.